everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Monique Renee and today I am bringing you another piece for the YouTube Artist Collective. This time the theme is spirit animals focusing on endangered animals. So I actually have two different pieces that I made for this video. So while I'm talking about this piece, I am going to be talking about the red wolf and why they're endangered, what happened to them, stuff like that. And then when I'm talking about this piece, I'm going to be going over different ways that you personally can help the red wolf and the environment as a whole. Stay tuned until the very end of this video where I will give you guys some amazing resources. You can do more research for yourself and also some charities you can give your money to, all that kind of good stuff. This topic is really important to me and I really care a lot about the environment and nature and animals. So I'm really excited to be bringing you guys this video and I hope you guys will like it as well. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first I am drawing this painting of a wolf. And real quick, the reason why I painted two different paintings is because I will be selling these as part of the YouTube Artist Collective, and I realized that not everyone would want the painting of the girl holding a dying wolf. So I painted this one as well, so if you still want to buy a painting to support the red wolves, you can buy this one instead. So, disclaimer over. So I did also want to talk real quick about the YouTube Artist Collective. By now, you guys probably know what it is, and if you haven't, um, go and watch some of my other videos that explains it a bit more because I have way too much to talk about to go into that, but I also did want to extend a warm welcome to our newest member, Danica Sills. So her art is amazing, and like usual, I will have everyone's videos linked in the comment or the description box below. So now, the animal I chose for this painting is the red wolf. And I chose the red wolf because I feel like it's really close to me, like not figuratively, but literally. Like the red wolf is native to North America, so I kind of feel like this is my own backyard. And we always hear about animals that are endangered, like elephants and the rhinoceros and orangutans. <clears throat> but I feel like no one really acknowledges the fact that there are endangered animals in North America as well. So one of the most endangered animal in North America is the red wolf. Now the red wolf's story is really interesting because it was actually the first animal to be declared extinct and then be taken off the extinction list. So what happened was when people moved out into North America and started settling, um, they started killing red wolves in mass, both to make way for farms, so habitat destruction, and also because they were often mistaken for coyotes, so they would often be killed recklessly, not knowing that they were actually a wolf, and then even later, not knowing that they were an endangered species. So farmers would see these coyote looking animals, you know, stalking around their farms and they would immediately just shoot them, um, which is a problem. I personally believe you shouldn't shoot coyotes anyway, um, but it's a little bit worse when you take into account that they're shooting these animals and there are none of them left. Like, the red wolf is almost extinct in the wild. There are 45 red wolves right now in the wild. Now there are more in captivity, there's about 200 in captivity, and what happened was the Red Wolf Coalition, which is the charity I'm raising money for today, they basically, they, you know, took the red wolves and they're like, wow, this is a huge problem, there are no wolves left. So they started these sanctuaries for the wolves and they started breeding them in captivity so that they would no longer be extinct. So. While the red wolf is no longer considered extinct, it's still extremely, extremely endangered. I mean, just imagine only 45 in the wild. I know people who have more family members than 45 people. So imagine your entire species just being reduced to 45 in the wild. So the red wolf is just it's insane how how there are just almost none of them left. So that's why I am raising money for them today to help the Red Wolf Coalition in the conservation efforts that they do. They are, re do, are reintroducing wolves back into the wild all the time. Um, it's just a really expensive and long and hard process. So any money that they can take, the better for these wolves. So 
Yes, I painted this with watercolors and colored pencil. It was really therapeutic to paint, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I personally really like how it came out, and I will go over real quick some of the donation raising I will be doing. Um, part of the YouTube Artist Collective is we always sell off the originals, so this original painting is for sale on my Store Envy website, so I will have that linked below. I will also be selling prints. Now, 100% of the profit of the prints is going to be donated right to the Red Wolf Coalition, and 50% of the profit from the original is going to be donated as well. So, if you guys want to buy a print, just know that every print is going to be a direct donation right into helping these Red Wolves. So, that's pretty much the end of this speed paint. And like I said, I'm really pretty proud of how it came out. I'm not used to drawing animals, so this was quite an adventure for me. But here is the final painting for that. Like I said, prints and originals available on my store Envy. So now I am going to be talking a little more about how you personally can also help the Red Wolves. Of course, donations is a huge thing for the Red Wolf Coalition. There's a few other charities I will be listing down below that also accepts donations for the Red Wolf. Um, actually, one of my goals is to raise enough money to where I can quote-unquote adopt a Red Wolf, and that's only $50. So if I can sell, you know, five 8 by 10 prints, then we can adopt a Red Wolf. And that basically just means that you <coughs> you donate money <coughs> that basically just means that you donate money to this foundation and they use that money to go toward the care of a specific wolf and they send you like a picture of it and a little certificate and a little thank you note from the wolf and I think it's really cool so if I would be able to do that I would be just so ecstatic um, and there are a couple other organizations as well. If you guys noticed, I was wearing a shirt with a red wolf on it in the beginning of this video, and that's actually from a really cool charity that sells, like, cute t-shirts and bags and stuff, and they're actually cute. Like, I'm gonna wear this all the time, but all, 100% of the profits from that goes toward the Red Wolf Coalition, and they also have um, little markets for the manatee, and I think the orangutan, and stuff like that. So I will definitely be linking them in the description as well, because I think that's such a great charity, because they're also giving something to people that they actually want, and also donating to a really great charity, so that's really awesome. So all of these, I've kind of been talking more about short-term goals, so they will help the wolves right now. That money can be used right now, but I also really wanted to talk about some more long-term ways to help not only the red wolves, but the environment as a whole. So I don't think I really need to tell you guys that the environment is kind of in a state of crisis at the moment, which is really terrifying, and it's something that I'm really trying to actively, um, I wouldn't say change, but bring awareness to and do everything in my ability that I can to make any kind of difference on climate change and deforestation and habitat loss and some of the ways I'm doing that I'm going to share with you guys. So the number one thing that you can do to really help the environment and help all kinds of endangered animals is to reduce the amount of meat that you eat. I will also be linking some documentaries in my description so where you can do your own research about this, but long story short, the agriculture industry is the number one cause of methane gas, which um, has a huge role in global warming. It's also the number one cause of deforestation, um, especially in South America. Basically, what farmers and the agriculture business is doing is tearing down forest in mass, in huge, huge, huge amounts to make way not only for cows and livestock and pigs, but for the food needed to feed them in order for us to eat them. So one really startling statistic is that we could actually fix world hunger just with the amount of corn that we feed to cows that we then consume. So really, going even one day, like I know a lot of people cannot go vegetarian or even vegan for a lot of reasons, and I understand that, but even reducing the amount of eat, if you go meatless Mondays, like one day a week, that is a huge amount of work that you're doing to prevent deforestation and climate change. So 
just something to think about uh, sitting in the back of your guys' heads. Um, I'm also, like I said, going to um, leave a few documentaries in the description. My favorite has been Cowspiracy because it really drives home the environmental impact that the meat and agriculture industry has on our planet. So yes, that is the number one thing you can do to help the environment as a whole. Another thing you can do is petitioning your local government. So I know this really, really differs depending on where you guys live, but I personally live in Nevada. So I have the opportunity to call my state representatives and tell them what I think about certain things. So I know it can get really discouraging because you kind of feel like I'm one person, you know, what will my voice do? But the thing is, if we have enough people talking and enough people lobbying and making phone calls, that makes a huge difference and we can really do a lot of work with that. So maybe in wherever you're from, whether it's the United States or a different country, if you hear about a law being passed that you don't agree with, you know, make a noise, make some noise, let your voice be heard that you are not okay with this. And that's really the most powerful tool that we have is our voice. So if you're staying silent when you know you shouldn't be, just know that your voice does mean something and you can make a difference with your voice. So that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about for this video. I hope you guys will help me in raising money for the Red Wolves. I'm really excited to be have the opportunity to raise money for them and hopefully make a little bit of an impact with the prints that I sell. So like I said, I will be selling prints 4x6 and 8x10 sizes and those will be on my store Envy every single penny from those prints will go toward the Red Wolf Coalition and also 50% of the originals, if I happen to sell those, will also go toward the Red Wolf Coalition. And then if I do raise enough money to adopt a wolf, I will make an update video to this, letting you guys know that we made a goal. Um, so $50, guys, $50. Um, also, if you just want to donate and don't want to buy a print necessarily, I will also be leaving those charities below so you guys can just donate straight to the source if you would rather do that. Um, I did also want to talk real quick about this painting. I completely forgot. I was whew, going on a tangent. Um, I wanted to paint something that really had emotion behind it. So really hearing about the Red Wolves and doing research on them, hearing about how they were extinct and how farmers just keep killing them and killing their habitat, it made me feel really sad. So I wanted my painting to portray that sadness and almost hopelessness feel that I had when reading up about this. So that's why you have this girl and she is clutching this wolf for dear life. Um, but unfortunately, the wolf has already been shot and the wolf is bleeding out. And I know that is a bit of a rough concept and a little bit of a downer, which is also, again, why I painted two different paintings. But I think it's really important for us to look at things that make us uncomfortable because it shows the reality of it. The reality is that these wolves are dying and they're dying in huge quantities and that there's almost none left. So I think it's important to really shed light on that, even if it does make some people uncomfortable. Heck, even I'm uncomfortable sometimes when I look and think about this, but I think it's important to realize just how dire and how extreme the situation is. So that is all for my video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I truly appreciate every single one. Make sure to check out the rest of the YouTube Artist Collective. Links will be in the description. And yeah, thank you guys. I love you all, and I hope you have an amazing day. Bye!